Welcome back to Love, Life, and Legacy, the podcast dedicated to helping you navigate these hypersexualized times of ours. Today is a little bit special. We have a special guest named Sammy Oyama, who you might remember from the early days of High Noon, this crazy podcast of ours. And we get into some of the shenanigans that are going down here in High Noon, how we are expanding and how we are going to take over this world of ours. So if you're interested in being on the winning team, figure out details inside. There you go. Pretty good. Rough start, a peak mo- uh, moment for you to remember this day. Remember that. Sammy. I'm the Can you see why we kicked him off the podcast, everybody? Can you see why the feds are after us? It's because Sammy Yell was back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be back. We are sitting in a tiny table in an apartment in Tokyo, Japan. We are on the toe of the last leg of our tour. We're like at the very end of a one-month tour, which started out in Korea a couple weeks, week in Philippines, and now we're in... J to the pen, where, as you all know, historically, I was born and raised. Um, So I'm going back to my roots here for all of you followers. And Sammy and I want to explain a little bit about this tour, but about how Heinen's expanding, because we just made some big moves. We're making big moves. And if you're not looking, you're going to blink, and then you're going to be like, whoa, is Heinen next door? Did they just move in next door? Are they in my brain? Are they in the air? And yes, we're going to be in all those places. Uh, but give us some time. We're expanding. It's going to take some time. So Sammy, well, first of all, welcome back. He's got so many so many things that he wants to say. I can see it in his face. What's up, Sammy? What do you got? What do you got in me? All of you, I just want to let you know that notice how few words are coming out of my mouth up to this point, and it's just because you guys are not the only ones. I also cannot keep up with the things that comes out of Andrew's mind. And they, Sammy's on a different schedule. Yeah, Sammy's just, you know, there's the, the, the Lamborghinis, and then there are tricycles, and Sammy's just... just thinking about... <laughs> Is it a Lamborghini? Okay. I'm a Lamborghini of sorts. Just high maintenance and pretty useless. Just looks nice. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I have very nice color options. I come in many colors. Um, mostly reds and yellows and patches. And your doors open sideways? Correct. All right. And you go from zero to done in 1.3 seconds. <laughs> Basically, when Sammy's on the podcast, we have to... You see, why, why is this episode six minutes? Because we had to edit it all out from an hour and a half to six minutes. So, everybody, let's go to the beginning. We, prior to touring, had a staff meeting. Well, actually, it was in the midst of our tour. And we decided that we're going to take over the world. Very casually, over tea and crumpets (laughs) one evening. Actually, this was like a year ago. We decided we wanted to make chapters as our main goal. And the reason is this, we travel a lot and we meet so many people and in the moment, people are transfixed by the experience. They're like, wow, this is a great experience. I want more of this. What can I do? And we say, well, you can join a program. Most of them don't, right? Most of them don't. They either just don't want to, they're not ready for whatever reason they don't. So then we leave and then they don't join anything and then they kind of forget about that experience it just kind of goes away so we realize that there's a an issue of the fact that high noon goes where we go the providence goes and we don't want that to happen we want it to be constantly prevailing the atmosphere and so we decided to make chat and we kind of kept it a little hush hush because we had to first find the people and then we also had to Make sure that everything was okay with leadership and there's a lot of boxes to check to make sure that we didn't 
you know, destroy our reputation. So now we officially have three new chapter leaders seeking two more, one in Japan, one in Tokyo. <laughs> I haven't finished my coffee yet. One in Japan, one in Korea, you know, Korea, Tokyo. And, uh, but the ones, what are the ones that we, we, we hired? Yeah. So we hired the chapters or the people. You want Both. To so Latin America, <laughs> poor timing. Orbit that don't roll everybody in the red corner. So Latin America <laughs> is the easiest one to get going because it already existed. Um, Karina has been working, creating a team there for quite some time, and they've got operations and staff already ongoing. And it was a matter of finding a replacement for Karina as she phased out into her new responsibility with the BFM. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so we found that person. Um, and I tried to do a drum roll, but I only had one hand. But in the drum roll, <laughs> Melissa Santos. Santos is Santana. Santana. But Santos, yes. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Yeah, Melissa Manor, aka Santana. Santana. She was our first hire, and I know her from way back, back Which in New Zealand. Which is a left field um, choice, and and if we really if we've time to go into the background of how we came across all of these people, it's, it's pretty fun stories. Um, Melissa too, it was she was like a last minute application kind of like for her it was a she was, she found out about it and not like a second thought. She really was eager and cared about it, but it was it was with no anticipation that she would had any legitimate you know like possibility of getting the position because i mean she's not she's an american <laughs> she does not speak spanish in fact but she actually is half brazilian and speaks fluent portuguese so there's still some level of communication uh but it was just so different than what we anticipated looking for uh we need we you know we're thinking okay latin america yes there's brazil but mostly Spanish speaking. So someone who's in Latin America, someone who knows all the people there and has connections with, you know, who's doing what and already has a foundation of trust with the people there. And most importantly, actually speak Spanish. And we basically um, found the perfect person who was none of those things. <laughs> yeah, God laughed at our plans. So just to step back for a second, you know, Latin America has been going on for a while. Karina established a really cool system over there. They have their own podcast. Shout out to Tobias. We have programs in Spanish, but it was like Latin America is massive. That's Central and South America. Many countries, mostly Spanish. So that was everything was pretty much in Spanish, but it also has this giant country floating in the middle called Brazil. And they're Portuguese speaking, right? So the Portuguese side, if there were two legs, the Portuguese leg was very weak and emaciated. So it we were looking for a Spanish speaking person as that was like a key qualifier. You know, we were not considering anybody who did not speak Spanish until Melissa applied. And then we're like, oh man, that makes so much sense. Somehow it's somehow... Every once in a while, you'll perfectly fit a square peg in a round hole. You won't remember how you do it because that's God. And so Melissa is that square peg. And so she, what's crazy too is that she's in Brazil. She's blessed with a Brazilian. And then we found out later that her staff are mostly in Brazil too. So you got Stephanie, you got Samara, and... Tobias is kind of floating around in all these other little countries, but he might end up coming to Brazil too. So there's a lot of energy in Brazil and the Brazilian church is massive mm -hmm. and they were just high noon. Latin America just showed up to a Brazilian event last Sunday. Apparently there was like 500 people and there's a lot of energy. So somehow God is working over there in Brazil and Melissa is the little captain with a big hat on the front of the ship. Guiding, guiding everybody nice and safely. It reminds me of uh, 
I think it's maybe Baby Lost that movie, or but there's some movie where there's like a little no, it's a short in like a Pixar or something. Anyway, it's a little baby who's captaining a ship, and she's wearing like a white sailor uniform, and it's got a big hat, and it's at, at the steering wheel. Yeah. So that image is Melissa for all of you, and we're gonna have her in a couple weeks on this to explain her side of the story, but. Really exciting because Latin America has a lot going for it. Um, there's a lot of programs, different people. There's, check this out, more females in their groups than males by a large percent. And there's parents groups, a lot of stuff happening. So um, we know that that's going to, that they already had something going. Melissa's just going to take it to the next level now. Where else? Our next chapter is uh, and. Europe. So Europe was an area that our sites have been on. Uh, just naturally, it's a, a huge base of our membership going back decades. Um, the At least in the American church, the demographic is more than likely anything else. You're half or whole Japanese, or <laughs> it's if you, if you pick one of those, you probably cover most of the second gen in America. And so, you know, we have, we have a lot of members there and um, like el elder members, you know, the church has been there for a long time and we've been there a few times. Um, it's an area that we have a strong relationship with, a strong foundation. A lot of our program participants are from Europe because of the glory of the internet and is very easy place to access. Most of the church members speak English, uh, but we wanted more. We wanted something more meaty, something more substantial to be able to provide for people there, uh, like a on-continent presence, you know, just someone who could be available to like really make personal relationship with the uh, leaders there, with our people there, and who could travel around and speak at communities, and who could like, keep those people in mind when we're developing and preparing all of our programs, uh, because a very real kind of like obstacle barrier that we continually come across with is uh time zones that blasted time and space and so uh we were doing all these programs and inevitably we need to cater to where most of our participants are which is in american time zone and so we do these programs evening time is usually best and it's like we have we have yeah, it's a smaller amount of participants from Europe, but it's enough where it's a hindrance to a pretty significant amount of people that we need to do programs in the evening, which is the like early afternoon or noontime in Europe, which is a very difficult time, depending on the day of the week, to do anything and to do a, a consistent uh, thing like a program or to join a group. And so to be able to uh, accommodate people more in Europe. And so we've got a chapter there and a chapter leader or anything more on the chapter. Yeah, we, we do have, we know a lot of people. It's cool because when now when I see pictures of European workshops, I know a lot of those people. Oh yeah. And we've worked with a lot of them, but just feel like there's, you know, an ocean between separating us. Yeah. Metaphorically and, and, and practically <laughs> Just there's something there where it's it's not the same. We haven't been able to give the same level of service. So we want to. And that's why we found somebody by the name of Andrazik. And well, because I'm trying to get my phone to, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Yeah, his name is just Andronic. Yeah. And just like Madonna, he's he's Andy. When you, when you get to a certain level of notoriety, you don't need a last name. Yeah, he, he good. He good. And he is based out of Lithuania. And again, like, wasn't on our radar. Was it? We, we had some, that's why we like this process of sending out applications because we think of who we naturally think of. That's why you see a lot of repetition in our movement. The same leaders always, they just get moved around. But that's no good because same old ideas, just going to different places. So we, he came out of nowhere. And we were all, after the interview with him, like, I guess he's our guy. That's wild. Like, out of nowhere. It's kind of like, uh, for all you parents out there, Cars 3, in the beginning, 
Lightning McQueen's winning all the races, he and his buddies, and then there's just this one race where Jackson Storm just wins. I'm like, who's this guy? Just came out of nowhere, and that was Andronic Storm. That's his <laughs> last name. And uh, really cool, because he's, again, similar to Melissa. We weren't expecting it, and God worked. And, no, yeah, we had an idea of what a chapter leader will look like there. Yeah. And then we found the perfect person who was completely the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty humbling. And um, so, yeah, he's he's going to be on this podcast, too, in a couple weeks. But basically, he's uh, he's really wants to give back to our community. And um, he's going to find a way. We're going to find a way to make this work. Each chapter is going to be very unique because they're all starting in different places in terms of their own foundation and where the church is at. But also because each person is super unique. So... He is a creative person, a serious person. He likes long walks on short sidewalks. He and romantic. <laughs> Sam is on his tricycle again, not not catching up. So, uh, we are excited about here because you know there's there's a lot of countries in it and a lot of people, but it's really widely spread out. Obviously, geographically, but our membership is really widely spread out. So, um, but because of that, they get so excited when they hang out with each other. So we want to kind of capture that energy. And Andy's going to be going around actually to give talks to a lot of these places and stir up some of that fire again mm -hmm. and get people in programs and get them healing and, and thriving again. So Europe is looking good. I'm excited about I'm genuinely, like, everybody's like, well, I'm excited to share with you this new opportunity, every YouTube video, but I'm at a green. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited about this new mattress. Really, really. I'm honestly excited about the possibilities. That's what I was saying to Andy. He's like, now it looks cool. The situation looks cool. But like in three months, six months from now, that's what I'm excited about is to see how this develops mm -hmm. in each of the chapters. And he's going to put his spin on it, and we're going to be excited to see how that works. Yeah. Some elbow grease and some spit. Can put some spit on it. Thanks, Sammy. Yep. Hey, just, just me in my corner. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking his coins in the hat. Yeah. Uh, so then last, Lee, who do we have? Better get back at him at that. Jude Money Montevar. Yeah, Jude is a, is a cool dude, man. He... We were just in Philippines a few days ago, and Jude had the task of being our, what are those, a concierge. He was just, you know, taking care of us while we were there, and it was very stressful for him because he's not used to that, and we make a lot of demands. Like, I don't have tea any less than 76 degrees, but no more than 76.5 degrees. So anything in between that good, anything else, I throw it down the highest flood of stairs I can at the saddest looking person. I'm just like that. You know, it's just me. It's just who I am. And this is why Andrew has no friends. <laughs> it's also why I'm the greatest person ever. So he met our demands and he did a great job. But um, honestly speaking, you know, I'd never been in the Philippines. The Wolfenburgers, Saudi, they went a couple times. I had, we had a, an, I do want to say awful, but it was a not fun time in Manila. And I had this impression like, oh, man, this is difficult. It has, it has nothing to do with the church. It has everything to do with the smells and the many, many dogs. And the many, many smells of the dogs. And yeah, and the dog smells, all the you know, everywhere. But it was, we also just in a really busy part, so I don't want to judge an entire, you know, island. But then we went to a couple other islands and I went from, I don't like this place to I'm, I want to live here because the church community is amazing in the Philippines. The people are amazing. They have a lot of hope, a lot of vibrance. And so we have somebody there, Jude. So Sammy, Jude gave a couple of talks when we were in the Philippines and Sammy put a different name for him on the slide each time, which made Jude kind of crawl inside the skin because he wasn't used to that. But, uh, He's been doing YSP stuff. He's kind of like a natural leader. Um, but he was also really impacted by High Noon. And again, we'll hear his story um, next week. But this dude, um, he's young and he's 
he's got a lot of passion and he's it's it's going to be a wildly different church in Philippines than anywhere else, you know? It's such chapter or just sorry, church? chapter, yeah. chapter, yeah, yeah, with the church there is so young. Everybody's so young, right? Even the old people are young, young old. Um so there's just a lot of potential. The original director is like 38. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's wild. There's no there's no gray hair in our leadership over there. So um it's just it's going to be really cool to watch these people grow. So, you know, those are our chapters. Again, we're in Japan now. We're kind of looking around. We were in Korea looking around, looking for chapter leaders. If you have any suggestions, holler at us. Yes. Um, yes. But I want to kind of go a little bit more meta and talk about, you know, the essence of chapters is, of course, to have representation in these places. But what else, what else do you see happening with these chapters? Well, well, for, I mean, I want to, I want to talk more about like why we're doing this tour, right? It's just mm -hmm. completely tied to this, these chapters concepts. And it, for a lot of people, it seems normal. High noon goes on tours. We've been doing it for years. Uh, but this time it was with a lot more intention. And it's because we have this in the backs of our minds that we want to plant these, um, roots in different places. And so, um, that's why we, we went to Philippines to help Jude. Um, he, he's already hired um, as a chapter leader there, and we want to help him get started. So we kind of got the fires going, and he's going to spend the rest of the year traveling around, um, giving more talks, connect with members, and then just to plant seeds in Japan and Korea, you know, what uh, Andrew mentioned. And so we're on the lookout for people here. And so, and so, and so you know, that's why we're here. And that's also then part of a bigger picture, right, of chapters and why. Why chapters? How do we settle on that? And it really goes back to Hainun's ethos. What we're all about is not, it's not just about us helping people, but it's about creating a culture and a culture that comprises of people and a community that helps one, that helps one another. Um, just rain straight up. We, we want a full disclosure. Sammy's parents are on the other side of his door. And they're really curious about his eating habits and whether he got enough yogurt. And his dad just came in, showed him the yogurt. So the Sammy, Sammy would be very good for you. <laughs> so Sammy's a little distracted because he's not used to doing a podcast with his parents. Right, he hasn't done that since he was twelve. Yeah. So, <laughs> so raising up leaders—that's a huge part of what we value and and what High Noon is about. And it really does not being us being people's saviors, but people learn how to grow and then become um, messiahs for others as well. Right? And that's just a beautiful cycle, right, of being helped up and then creating a strong base and then helping others up. Mm. And that's how Hainun has operated since the beginning. And we're just expanding on a broader and broader scale of the same thing. It's our flywheel. We found what we're good at and we just keep spinning it and spinning it. And then shout out good to great. Yeah, and we just exponentially grow in that way. And that's what the chapters are about, is that we really want to go to the next level of leadership and operations within our organization. And that involves finding like a good fertile <laughs> This is weird. <laughs> I thought it was a good analogy, then it thought it sounded kinda of weird. We're really People who are, who are ripe, this good fertile soil that we can plant the high noon seed in them, and and then they can, the seed can grow in them, and um, they can expand to help a lot more people than we can on our own, and that's this chapter model to help people find like uh, ownership, independence, and so we've kind of strategically looked at our worldwide church community and and where people are are uh, congregated and where it makes sense to invest these kind of resources of time and energy and money to help the greatest number of people. And so, um, of course, then America is where we're based and Latin America is a natural choice and then Europe is a natural choice and the Philippines is a natural choice. Just it, It's a huge concentration of membership that speaks English, so it works really well. And then we're looking at Japan and Korea 
just because they're such central hubs for um, our worldwide church. And then starting with that, and then slowly branching out more and more. And so where the vision is big to have a network of high noon people accessible to everyone around the world, like Coca-Cola. That's Coke. That was Coke's mission, is a, a Coca-Cola available to anybody on the planet. We hate tea. <laughs> we want to get rid of all the teeth. Yeah, cool. We are, we do, you know, we have been worldwide, but again, in so far as a cloud can be worldwide, but a cloud also disappears and makes way for new clouds. So we want to stick around and not be a cloud. <laughs> we want to just make sure that this takes its natural course and that we're not inhibiting it. So the natural, the most natural thing that any of us can do is to live a high noon life. But there are so many inhibitors, meaning our tendency to isolate ourselves, our lack of community, our lack of intentionality with our time. But if we kind of spend a little extra time creating the infrastructure that it allows you to be more natural and you in your natural state when you're living the high noon life will naturally want to help other people more and then that's how we spread but we have to have a presence in you know these main places for now for it to spread and hopefully we can do this more and more throughout the world and then dominance is inevitable but right now we're a little organization with big dreams and we're slowly getting bigger feels like we're getting big faster actually but also slow just because it's such a big battle we'll get there so yeah our tours now are cool because it's not just randomly we'll go to a place but we're setting up shop when we tour now and even when we leave now jude is going to be touring in philippines well hopefully Andronic will be touring soon in europe and melissa and her team will be touring in latin america so Soon enough, Sammy and I will just invest in a good rocking chair and sit back and talk about the good old days with our corn cob pipes with bubblegum flavored bubbles mm -hmm. and uh, snore ourselves to sleep. Yeah. What was that, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's that's a brief update. It's a kind of a logistical in nature, but it's important to note that high noon is aggressively trying to expand um, so that we can help more people and so that more people can help more people. So as always, give us your feedback. Let us know if we're lacking in any way, but also let us know if you want to help in some way because, yeah, we have some chapter leaders and that helps, but we need a, a legion of volunteers and enthusiastic people. So we're always looking for help. Let us know. Sammy's doing HR, so he needs a lot of work. He needs a lot of complicated people, you know, looking to help so that he can place them in the proper position. All right. So we are going to go. Uh, any last words, Sammy? Was it nice to be back on the saddle? It's fun to be back on the saddle with a mic talking to you. The mic led my parents on the other side of the door. There's like crashing plates. They're having some Greek festival outside, so... Anyway, yeah, from Tokyo, we're signing out. God bless your faces, everybody. <laughs>